Yo, yo, what's good? It's your boy, Morgan, from the Jams and Tea Podcast. Been sort of on a on a tier list kick lately, tier ranking kick. Uh, so I figured I'd hop on to that with one of my favorite acts, favorite bands, favorite artists of all time, one Mr. Nick Cave. And the Bad Seeds, a band that really needs no introduction. If you clicked on this, you know who Nick Cave is, Mr. Australian Murder Man. Let's just, let's just get right on into it. We're going to be doing this in chronological order. Uh, and also, I will be including uh, the Nick Cave and Warren Ellis release Carnage in this tier list just because... It's of enough kinship with the recent Bad Seeds output that I think it would it would be a disservice to not include it with this ranking. So, first off, we have Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds from Her to Eternity. His debut record after Nick Cave left the boys next door slash the birthday party after that band dissolved. And this is a this is a really fascinating debut record. Uh, genre descriptors probably closest you come are post punk slash no wave. Very strange, loud, abrasive album. Um, and it you know hardly a hot take to say it's not one of your favorite Nick Cave releases, but you know it's not one of my Nick, favorite Nick Cave releases. So here we are. Not much to say about this one. This one's probably going to go in the C tier. Another thing is the scale is relative to the Bad Seeds discography itself. Uh, if I were doing this just as how I rank albums in general, how I feel about them, how I rate them, this album would probably go in the B tier. Uh, but relative to the Bad Seeds discography, as uh, firmly C tier. Uh, next up, we have The Firstborn is Dead, which is of a similar ilk to From Her to Eternity in tone, uh, but more of a, a blues-inspired in, direction they took with this one. I, I enjoy this record a fair bit, a little bit more than From Her to Eternity, so I'm going to slot that right there, but it's not as much of an improvement as one might like to see in a sophomore record although it does differentiate itself enough to be essential. Next up, we have the covers album, Kicking Against the Pricks. Uh, I, don't, I don't got nothing to say about this one. It's also not a hot take to say that this is your least favorite Nick Cave album, but it, it totally is my least favorite. It's just, you know, some of these interpretations are interesting. If you want to hear Nick Cave cover some interesting stuff yeah there you have it but you know there's not much here that's really essential this is probably the only release of theirs that i would say is inessential and following that we have your funeral my trial uh this is a very clear step up over these first three records in my opinion each of which i enjoy to varying degrees but i think this one deserves the b tier uh real Real solid stuff, uh, a further building on and exploration of this of this blues inspired post punk sound, heavier incorporations of uh, gothic rock, uh, a lot of which was going around in the music world in this point in the eighties. I think this was eighty six. Yeah, it's really solid album. Great indicator of where they would go next as a unit, and where they would go next as a unit is. Tender Prey is often regarded as the first classic in the Nick Cave and, ba and the Bad Seeds discography, and far be it for me to disagree with that because this album, this album is fucking amazing. Immediately right out of the gate with the best song they had written up to this point, and one of the best songs in their discography overall, The Mercy Seat, and there are, there are a handful of tracks that follow it that are just as good if not even ones that I maybe like a little bit more. This is the full culmination of pretty much everything that Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds have been striving for. 
up to this point, they fucking hit it out of the park. And uh, two years after that, we have The Good Son, 1990. This also an A-tier album. Though it notes a significant pivot away from some of the sounds of the previous album and includes a more sort of singer-songwriter approach, uh, very much inspired by like gospel songs and uh, hymns from various religions. And it's just a really, really fantastic, really full, gorgeous sounding album. Um, I slightly prefer Tender Prey just because it's more my sound, I guess, more what I'm interested in from Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds as a whole. Uh, but Good Son, basically just as good. Once again, two years later, we have Henry's Dream. Uh, this is a sort of a really folk rock concept album. Really great addition to this discography. I think in the 90s here, we really start to see sort of pivot away from building upon one sound and pretty much just jumping from one sound to the next with each subsequent album while being very, very much singularly Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds and Henry Stream is a great example of this. A really excellent album. Some of their best songs on here. And in 1994, we have the absolute classic that is Let Love In. Far be it for me to say that this isn't their best album up to this point, uh, which it is. You know, the only hot take I have about this is maybe that it is not quite S tier. Just nipping at the heels of S tier and firmly at the front of the A tier thus far. Phenomenal album. A handful of absolute fucking stone cold classics from this band. Just, just fantastic, really bluesy, really full beautiful stuff here uh it's one of their best albums to date and one of the best albums of the best year in music history that being 1994 no real hot takes about that one so just after that we have murder ballads which is a fantastic album one of my first nick cave listens really uh notable for its storytelling and the lyrics each song is a different story of you know homicide as the title would imply which is really really great stuff has some of the band's best songs on it i guess this is probably my hottest take so far i think this is again much like let love in is nipping at the heels of s tier this is nipping at the heels of of the a tier for me still a really fantastic album and i would have to i would have to reiterate that if this were a general tier list and not relative to the discography this would go in the a tier probably uh but in the discography itself uh this is really where it belongs in my estimation really great album uh just not exactly what i look for from this band i might even go so far as to say that it is just a touch bloated although you know that's that's a strange thing to say because i don't necessarily know what i would cut or refine on the album to make it less bloated because it feels like everything here is essential you know by the time you get to en the end of O'Malley's Bar as great as that song is you know it, it the runtime takes its toll on you that works for a lot of people and I totally understand why but it doesn't quite work for me uh so right here is where it belongs following Murder Ballads just the year after breaking up the two-year cycle that the Bad Seeds were churning out albums on we have The Boatman's Call one of the band's most popular and enduring releases, and it is also up to this point, in my estimation, their best and one of their best releases to this day. The story behind this album is pretty well documented. Uh, around the time of the making of Murder Ballads, Nick Cave was in a, a, a love affair with one Miss PJ Harvey, who uh, sang on one of the best songs on Murder Ballads, but that relationship had dissolved by the point that the boatman's call was coming into being it's a very uh minimal album relative to the works that preceded it uh very straightforward uh so pretty much every song on here is based around the piano but yeah really really phenomenal album uh some of nick's best songwriting probably his best songwriting up to this point just absolutely heart-rending stuff there's no 
artifice of characters like there are on Murder Ballads or Henry's Dream. This is not a, a concept album, really. Uh, it's just Nick openly heartbroken and trying to mend himself back together. Um, just absolutely beautiful stuff here. Uh, from this point comes the largest break in the discography thus far. Uh, there's a four-year gap between The Boatman's Call and No More Shall We Part. And you can tell because this sounds like an even further development of everything that was happening on The Boatman's Call. Uh, uh, to such a degree that I even think it is the superior album and also firmly in the S tier of this discography. This is an incredible release that despite its runtime, never once feels bloated or like it has an, a, an ounce of fat or filler on it. A uh, patch of songs that are similar in tone to The Boatman's Call, uh, but more full, more developed, more instrumentally diverse. Um, and while the directness is very much what appeals uh, to most people regarding The Boatman's Call, um, and it, it is also the appeal, the appeal of that album in particular to me, I think No More Shall We Part is a more than worthy uh, space for this group to grow this sound and, and further iterate upon these themes in a more expansive way. Uh, absolutely stunning, heartbreaking material here. Uh, just one of the best albums ever, if you ask me. The following that, we have one of the more polarizing <laughs> releases in the Bad Seeds discography, Nocturama. This is another one of my hotter takes to say that I actually like this album a fair bit. I don't like it so much that it doesn't get above C tier. I even prefer The Firstborn is Dead in comparison to the uh, soundscapes explored on Nocturama. It's more in the vein of The Boatman's Call and No More Shall We Part, but it, at this point I think No More Shall We Part showed the band fully exploring these ideas. They pushed it as far as it could go on that album, or at least as far as they were interested in pushing it. So Nocturama just feels like a bit of a reiteration on those themes, although it is a record that I do still enjoy uh, quite a bit. Following that, we have the absolutely massive 2004 double album, Avatar Blues and The Liar of Orpheus. This is an uh, absolutely stunning double album, uh, just some of the band's best work here. Uh, it's a further exploration, almost a culmination of pretty much everything the band had done up to this point, uh, and does it in really singular, fascinating ways uh, that I enjoy a lot. But it does, uh, similar to Murder Ballads, it does really start to feel its length, and while the two halves gel really well, and uh, again, I have trouble deciding what could be cut or trimmed on this album to make it a, a, a tighter experience to alleviate my criticism, uh, you know, this also goes into B tier. Just ahead of Murder Ballads, I would say, in terms of overall ranking. Um, really, really good stuff. In four years after uh, Avatar Blues and The Liar of Orpheus, we get Dig, Lazarus, Dig. This might be one of the hotter takes I have in this entire discography, in that I, in comparison to the decades previous that Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds had been operating. This is pretty easily my least favorite of them. And the, the most annoying thing about this is I can't really articulate why. Uh, it's just something about the sound of it feels, I don't know, it doesn't really appeal to me in the same way that uh, Avatar Blues or even Nocturama did. Although, I mean, that's that's the death of my credibility right there is putting Nocturama above Tig Lazarus Dig. Um, but I will stand by that. Yeah, I don't have much to say about this one. I can't really def defend my position other than it just does not gel with me the way that so many of these other albums do. And again, I would, uh, you know, this one would probably stay in the C tier. This wasn't uh, this discography in particular, uh, but it would be much, much more towards the front if, you know, in any other discography. Definitely a better album than the C tier here would give credit for, but still really not one of my favorite works of his. When we get to Push the Sky Away, the next album that followed Dig Lazarus Dig, this was now the longest uh, gap between 
Bad Seeds Records. That was a total of five years. Uh, this was released in 2013. And this is a fantastic album. I would, I'd probably put this in the A tier even. Um, just above uh, Abattoir Blues. Just a little bit. Not by much. It's a, it was a really new and interesting direction for the band up to this point. Uh, really, really amazing patch of songs here. Songs that are now classics like you know, Jubilee Street, Higgs Boson Blues, We Know Who You Are. Uh, really, really fantastic stuff that you know, showed a, a growing interest for the Bad Seeds and electronic instrumentation. And it's a really great jumping off point for that sound. And this sound was uh, further honed in on and focused on in the next album, Skeleton Tree. Uh, which, shocking, pretty much no one is a firm S tier in this discography uh, and is my favorite Nick Cave album overall. The story behind the album is well documented. I uh, definitely recommend checking out the One More Time with Feeling documentary uh, that was about the making of the album. Uh, so, you know, I won't reiterate upon that story here. Uh, if you're watching this, you probably already know anyway. This is one of my 10 favorite albums of all time. Uh, one of the absolute best of the 2010s, uh, regardless of dis anyone's discography, just in general. One of the most powerful, uh, deeply moving albums that I've ever heard in my life. Absolutely stunning. I'd love to uh, make this a record club on the podcast one day and really properly dive into it, even though that might be a little bit redundant since we've already done Ghosting really breathtakingly heart-rending album really indescribably <laughs> incredible stuff and followed by uh, Ghost Teen which makes a sort of duology both in sound and substance of the themes explored uh, I prefer Skeleton Tree a bit because of its relative brevity uh, but basically just as good I could there are even totally reasonable arguments that it's even better than Skeleton Tree. Just another, a further expansion, and sometimes an even better sounding expansion on the themes of Skeleton Tree. I think it's worth iterating that at this point, this is basically, if you ask me anyway, the best that electronic instrumentation has ever sounded, both this and Skeleton Tree, this duology here. Warren Ellis in particular is worth shouting out here. Uh, because he is so integral to the way that this band sounds at this point. Galleon Ship is in my top 10 favorite songs uh, of all time. It's just breathtaking. And there's, you know, there's pretty much nothing on here that isn't just a little bit behind it, in my estimation. Pretty much everything is as good as that song in one way or another. Definitely check out the uh, James and T Record Club video on Ghost Teen, which I unfortunately had to miss for reasons that I don't remember. But yeah, definitely check that out for a really in-depth, really great review of that album. And lastly, we have the 2021 release of Carnage, uh, which is just a Nick Cave and Warren Ellis album. I thought it fitting to include here. And this is another one for the S tier. I am going to, I would put this one just ahead of the Boatman's Call and just behind No More Shall We Part. Um, really, really incredible. <laughs> album once again from Nick Cave and Warren Ellis. We covered this album when it came out upon its release. Uh, I think we did a really good job of breaking down why it's so fantastic. Um, it is still my album of the year thus far uh, in 2021, so definitely check out that video if you're interested in more in-depth thoughts on the album, but needless to say, I think it's another uh, master. That is every album thus far. Pretty rare for me to have more S-tier albums than any other tier in the discography, and I think that goes a long way in showing just how fantastic Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds are uh, as musicians, as songwriters, as storytellers, as composers, 
just uh, unmatched for output of this level of pure quality unbelievable group that i feel is essential listening if you're going to be into music you know which is a really broad statement but i want i feel to be true nonetheless so yeah that is the nick cave and the bad seeds tier list tier ranking probably going to be doing a couple more of these if this is something you enjoyed there will be plenty to check out at, at the point of this recording we already have one tier list up that would be jake's tier list on porcupine tree uh, his favorite band and one of my favorite bands ever as well and that's a great video you should definitely check that out so yeah uh thanks for watching like comment subscribe what the fuck do people say at the end of youtube videos rock over london Rock on. Let's see if this.